Hey guys, Eric here. In this quick video, I'm going to show you how and why I set up my iPad the way I did. If you look at my screen here, you'll notice that this iPad is laid out very different than probably your typical um, iPad screen. Um, for one, I don't notice that I only have um, one one screen. I don't have multiple screens. I don't like scrolling to look for apps and so instead I've created lots of little groups and you can see that most of those groups are running along the bottom of my iPad screen. They're on a little taskbar. These are all the apps that I use constantly on a daily basis to do my work. So I access them easily down from the taskbar simply because if you have an iPad Pro as you know you can multitask. You can do split screens and have more than one apps going but you only can do that if you can drag them from the bottom so if the apps were anywhere else on the main screen you wouldn't be able to access them so because all of my apps are here I can easily access all of my go-to applications just by doing that. Isn't that neat? So, so there's a, a really cool tip. So you might want to take a look at that and, um, and you might want to do that for yourself. So I'm just having fun here. Just trying to show you how you can easily switch. Look at that. So, so I have the possibilities are, are endless. I can easily open up all these different apps. Um, by dragging and dropping them and, and do split screens and, and do all kinds of great things by keeping the applications running along the bottom. Okay, so the only ones that I keep on my main screen are kind of like Apple's default stuff, as you can see the Apple Store, the settings, and the camera, and the FaceTime. And Instagram's an exception because actually, as you, as you might know, Instagram doesn't really have an iPad version, it's the iPhone version and flips the screen horizontal. So you can't do that split screen trick anyway. And I frequent that app a lot, so it's got its own space on my desktop. I uh, just want to point at the bottom row, I have Google Assistant. And that's because um, it, it gives you the whole Google Assistant experience right in on an iPad. So if you have a Google Home device and you know you talk to it and you ask it what the weather is or set a timer or play the news it's it's pretty cool so um, I like having that Google assistant now built right into my iPad so um, and then I also have a, I use Google Play Music as my app of choice for listening to music so I have quick access to that and then entertainment here is just for relaxing and chilling out watching movies or TV uh, I suggest you check out these two apps one called Pluto it's the second row down and the one to the right of that one is called Exumo. I think that's how you pronounce it. I don't know. But both of those apps have like a hundred different like TV like channels. You can watch news and entertainment and sports. It's really cool and it's all completely free. So check out those apps. So those are my entertainment apps. And then my extra group just contains the stuff that I rarely use, the full apps that come from Apple. And that's it. That's my whole desktop experience. It's really simple um, and uh, easy to set up. So, so you might want to give that, give it a try. Give it a try. As you can see on the bottom, I, I, I separated my groups. I have my favorite group. Um, these are the apps, my go-tos that I do all the time. Web browsing, calendars, mail. And I use Google Keep um, instead of Notes because I recently switched over from an iPhone to a Google Pixel phone. And I made a video on that if you're interested in, in, in seeing why I made that switch. Why is this iPad guy using a Google Pixel phone? Well, I have a really good reason why. So watch that video. So anyway, so I use a lot of Google apps to switch back and forwards. Um, so it works on my phone and my tablet. I'm a news junkie. I love reading the news, especially tech news. So I have lots of apps on there. Um, this group here is my business. It's my main driver apps I use every day for, for business. And I take advantage of Google Drive for most of my, um, for personal files and my own business files. Um, 
and all of the Google Apps, Slides, Sheets, and Docs I use, I use for work every day. And then below that, next row is Microsoft stuff. It's um, Microsoft's OneDrive and PowerPoint and SharePoint and Word, and I use that for my my uh, day job as a as a marketing director. Um, I access all of those applications, to Microsoft Suite. And then below that, I have Dropbox. That's another cloud storage service like OneDrive and, and Google Drive. And um, and nowadays, um, I'm mostly using the top two. I'm not really using Dropbox as much these days. And then to the right of Dropbox, we have Keynote, Numbers, and Pages. As you know, that's Apple's default applications that do the very same thing as the apps above it them do. PowerPoint, your um, spreadsheets, and word processing. Uh, by the way, Evernote in the lower left corner, uh, great application. People use it for a note-taking app. You know what I use this for, though? I use Evernote as my long-term file storage. It's like a filing cabinet to me. So what if I have a receipt, like an oil change, or I buy new tires, or, or uh, um, any document that I just want to file away and store like you would in a regular file cabinet, I scan it or take a picture of it, and I store it in Evernote. And, I, and then I use the search function of Evernote for calling it up. And it's, for me, that's, that's all I use it for. It's really long-term storage. And, but it's a great app, and it serves that purpose for me. Um, Microsoft Outlook is an email program, as you know. And I use that for my day job as a marketing director for checking out my emails on there. Um, whereas on the bottom, my fave group here, I use the Apple's Mail app. And I do check my, my work email through that one as well, as well as my other two. Um, I have a junk email account that I use for getting circulars and flyers, as well as um, um, my own business account where I have my own website consulting and marketing company. So I'm using two different email apps at the moment. And then um, WP Office, to the right of Outlook, it's like um, that app, it encompasses um, a, a, um, a slide presentation, Excel-like documents, and word processing. Why don't I just open it up? So as you can see here, you can, do, you can, you can work in PDF files, Excel files, Word files, and PowerPoint files, all in one app, instead of having four different applications. It's a cool app. You might want to check it out. I rarely use it anymore these days, but um, I don't know. You never know. You might need, you might need to um, convert a document, and uh, you might want to give this a try. I don't know if, you, uh, if you're an old-time Apple user like me. Uh, you might remember a program called Clarisworks. And it had one app that you can do word processing, um, presentations, and spreadsheets. That's, this is kind of like the Claris works on an iPad. And then to the right of that is Weebly. I create uh, and maintain several websites for different companies. And I build them and manage them on Weebly because Weebly is a um, very simple and easy to use to create websites and maintain. And they did not pay me to say that. This is not a plug. I'm not endorsing any of these programs, by the way. And they're just apps that I use and that I like. So um, I'm advocating on my own behalf. OK, so th this next screen, PDF Expert, is, a, is another killer app that you might want to take a look at. It's the best PDF editing app that I've come across. It does cost a few dollars, but it's well worth it. And um, it allows you to extract PDFs, pull them apart. It allows you to merge multiple PDFs together. It allows you to edit the contents of PDFs. It allows you to do everything and anything that the Adobe Acrobat Pro um, desktop application allows you to do on a computer. Um, for some reason, Adobe doesn't allow you to do all those things uh, on, their, on their Adobe Acrobat app. But this PDF expert does. So. I use that program all of the time for assembling documents. So it's a great app. But I do have the Adobe Acrobat app to the right of it, and that's pretty much just a reader, as you might know. And then um, MailChimp to the right of that is for my email marketing. I do lots of email marketing for companies. And that's the service that I currently use for sending and, um, and reporting on emails. Um, 
the icon to the right of that, Cloud Convert, it's a cool little utility app for converting documents from one file format to another. So if you have a PNG image and you want to switch it over to a JPEG image or a GIF image, you can use this app to convert file formats from one to the next. So you might want to check that one out. Oh, incidentally, I think Cloud Convert and the first one, PDF Expert, they both allow you to extract um, zip files. And as you might have had that experience where somebody emails you a zip file and you're trying to open it on an iPad, well, how do you do it? Well, those two programs both will allow you to extract zip files. So there you go. Okay, so I'm going to show you a couple of graphic apps that I use. I use a, a lot of different apps that I just dabble in really to create graphics for my social media marketing or websites or just marketing, creating presentations. And um, so I have a lot of apps that I, I like to play with. Um, but really my go-to drivers are probably the upper left Snapseed. It's a free app and it's a great app for resizing and cropping and, and, and touching up photos. It's, um, it's probably my go-to app for, for doing that type of work. Um, Enhance, I don't really use, um, but the one to the right of that, Pixelmator, that's probably the closest thing to Adobe Photoshop uh, that I have. It allows you to do multiple layers and, and edit photos and retouch and do all kinds of great stuff to images. And it does cost a few dollars, but it's not a lot of money at all. Uh, especially compared to what desktop applications cost. And um, so I would highly recommend Pixelmator. So really I use Snapseed and Pixelmator for most of my photo editing, as well as maybe Google Photos. In the lower right corner there, I have Google Photos. And if you don't have Google Photos, I don't know why you don't have Google Photos by now. That's like the killer app a must have on any iPhone or iPad. It totally backs up all of your graphics from your phone or from your iPad, puts them up on the cloud, unlimited storage for free. So, so just get it on there. And it, it has um, um, some editing tools as well. So I, do, I use those three most of the time. The other ones you see on the screen I use on, on occasion as needed um, for specialty items, which I won't get into right now. I believe actually Adobe Comp in the upper right hand corner, I created a separate video explaining what that's all about. So take a look at that video if you're interested in that one. It's a really cool app. Uh, quick look over here, eh, not today. So these are just other apps that I dabble in. Again, I'm not an expert in probably in any of these, but um, these are just some of the tools that I play with. Okay, I think that I'll just wrap it up for today. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to post them in the comments. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to follow me if you're not already doing so. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.